I'm Niels Ventilin. I'm a uh, ML engineer in the Union AI team. Um, today, I just wanted to show off this fun little thing that I discovered uh, that OpenAI Codex can do, um, which is generate semi valid flight kit boilerplate code. So, um, just to give everyone some more context and background, uh, the OpenAI team recently developed and released this model called OpenAI Codex, which GitHub, since there's like a connection between OpenAI, Microsoft, and GitHub, you can see the, the connection there, uh, that GitHub Copilot is a thing that is backed or um, that is driven by OpenAI Codex. But yeah, this is, it's kind of, you know, marketed as this AI pair programmer thing that, you know, you write some code and then, GitHub Copilot will generate a bunch of code that it thinks would be valid, sort of conditioned on the previous code. Um, so to just go over some terminology, there's a prompt section, and then based on the prompt, the model will generate code that it thinks is somehow sort of coherent with the prompt. So OpenAI beta is a thing that's um, currently only private. So you have to kind of wait, uh, go, get on the wait list. Um, and the same goes with GitHub Copilot, actually, you have to sign up. Um, but I just wanted to give everyone a sense of how this works. So OpenAI Codex is um, kind of an, uh, uh, a specialization of a model called GPT-3. And what GPT-3 does is write is complete text. It's like basically a text completion language model where given the previous tokens generate a bunch more tokens. Uh, tokens being roughly like letters, you can think of it. So I can say, write an essay on World War II and it'll try to do something. Okay, cool. So you can see on the right hand, Side here, there's a bunch of little toggles, so I can increase the response length. Um, one known limitation of this model is the the longer the the length, the response length, the the more it will kind of break down and become incoherent eventually. But you can see here that you know there's there is some language that kind of makes grammatical sense. Um, I don't want to read this out to you right now, but so th this is this is like trained on basically the entire internet or a, a big part of the internet. Um, you can see the British spelling here. So, you know, it's like some people consider this as like a stochastic parrot. So it's like something that's seen a bunch of text and is basically kind of regurgitating what um, it has been trained on. The more optimistic folks will say like it's actually learned how to like abstract concepts and is able to like synthesize it in new ways. So, you know, um, I think the jury is out on that, but to switch over to the DaVinci Codex here, which is the OpenAI Codex model. So this has basically been trained on all of GitHub. So any public repo, and I'm not sure a private repo, I don't know, probably just public repos, you can be fairly confident that this model has been trained on. So it's seen this code and presumably it, since FlightKit is open source and you know the flight repos are open source, it's seen that code and you know has been trained on it to some degree. So I played around with this a little bit and I'll just show you like a happy path of this. So I'm gonna prompt it by saying from FlightKit import task and workflow. And then in a Python code comment, I'll say this function is a task that takes two floats and outputs their sum. So sometimes I've found that this outputs legacy flight kit uh, syntax. Oh yeah, so today at the demo gods are not smiling on me. It's, um, so let me just tweak this a little bit. Uh, this function task that, I don't know, I'm just, there's, there's a whole field of like, prompt engineering now of like, how do you 
do these prompts. Ah, okay, great. So as you can see, it's done all the type um, annotation here as is what flight requires. And then I'll say this task um, takes a float as input and computes the square. And let's say squares, squares it. Oh, okay, perfect. And then finally, this workflow calls add to numbers. This is maybe a little cheating, but and square a number in sequence. Okay, so it just ah, did the wrong thing. So it squares the inputs first before. Okay, well, I mean, in sequence is sequence. Oh, yeah, maybe that's why I messed up, but let's just keep that. Yeah, so I mean, I didn't really specify in what sequence, so technically this is still okay. Um, it even does this register thing, which is interesting. Um, I don't think this is actually valid syntax, but yeah, for now let's let's get rid of this. So so what 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 did I do? I basically wrote comments and um, OpenAI Codex was able to generate, you know, correct flight code. Obviously, um, this probably won't work for anything more than like trivial examples, but I was still blown away that. It was it was able to give me the right code. So like you can you can imagine, right? So this without the, the flykit prompt, this is still valid Python code. I mean, the sim simplicity of flykit makes it such that all it has to be aware of is this add task and add workflow decorator. Um, but in my explorations of this, this was generating like the legacy like syntax with I think like the out at input and at output stuff. So yeah, that's uh, all I wanted to share. Um, if anyone is curious or uh, wants to play around with this, I'd recommend you know getting on the wait list and just seeing how this, this can break. Um, this is just finally, I'll show you this one. One example I did uh, played around with before with involving data, fr data frames. So like adding new columns to data frame. Um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. It even knew about task resources. So I, think I, I asked for a flight get task that requires certain resources. This is wrong, um, but you know you get the idea. It it's wrong, but surprisingly good. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just just to clarify, these functions are not in any of our examples, right? I don't, I don't think so. So this data frame one is not. So this is like, it's yeah. mashing together what it's seen in data frame pandas, data frame code with the, the flight syntax. So arguably it's actually, it is actually learning something useful about the structure of code. Um, and by the way, this, this applies to a bunch of different um, languages as well. So, you know, my, the, the parting thought that I have for you is like, you know, if we have all, if we all have neural links, and then we have a thought to text model. And then we have, you can, you know, so you have like a brain to text that generates this stuff. And then this open AI codex. So you, know, you have like multiple models, like kind of in a pipeline. Um, so you can like think and then generate code, which would be, yeah, that's sci-fi dystopia for you. <laughs> Nice.